to create a tactic that actually works on football manager you need to consider not only what you want your team to do while you're playing you also have to consider what your opposition what you want your opposition to do when you're playing against them on match day so i'm going to use man city for example because we know everybody in Manchester city so i'm just going to give you a quick example as to what i'm trying to say let's say there's a traditional 4 3 3 here makes no difference as to who is playing so in the dm role now and then let's say you're playing as manchester city and then you're trying to break your position down then you have a lot of players up front trying to create chances you're playing on a low tempo style of play and then you can't seem to break your position down in order to find a way to break that team down you need to somehow find a way to isolate your playmaker from the opposition pressing him or stopping him from creating chances so what i'm going to use an example is that let's say i want rodri or kevin de bruyne to be my playmaker okay ideally kevin de bruyne is going to be on the right hand side in this position acting like a mezzala somewhat and let's say you're struggling to actually create chances a quick which actually fix that is to move Kevin De Bruyne to the defensive midfield position. I know according to your view of football manager, this is going to be very difficult for him to adapt to this role and play, but just hear me out. Since he's in the central midfield position here, he could be marked out, he could be pressed out, but you want to actually find a way to occupy the opposition's defenders and defensive midfielders and then give Kevin De Bruyne a lot of room to operate in, in the DM position. So what you're going to do is to actually set Kevin De Bruyne to play as, let's say, for example, a deep line playmaker on support duty and then have him operate in this role. And then you're going to go into your other central midfielders and then ask one of them to maybe be as an advanced playmaker on attack duty, give them a lot of work and then have the Metzala also play in this role. And the most important part of it is to go into your wing backs and then ask precisely both your wing backs to play on attack duty or maybe you have one as an inverted wing back but just ask them to go on attack try to push all the players into their positions half try to make sure that everybody is occupying an attacking or a defensive midfielder so one of the most of your attackers are going to be trying to press the opposition in their own territory and try to create a lot of room let's say i'm going to move this wing or let's say the inside forward is going to be somewhere in this position then your other inverted winger is going to be in this position then you have your wing backs all the way high up you can see now that kevin de bruyne has a lot of space to operate in this position here and try to create chances from deep and if your opposition is trying to press the playmaker they will not be able to get to this guy because they have to do it one two three four five six seven so you need to also put into consideration that your starting formation is not going to be the formation when your team is actually in possession of the ball so once you have that in mind knowing that you're going to actually design a tactic that forces your position to behave in a certain way when you're in possession of the ball it helps you create a tactic that is somewhat difficult to defend against on football manager so i also have a save here with wolves and i'm going to show you how to create a tactic using the same philosophy that i just gave you before and then as i mentioned what to consider is let's say that governing principle is the fact that you need to consider what your players are doing and then how you want your opposition to actually operate when you're on the field of play so if they're playing very defensive and you want them to somewhat come out is to try to create chances from deeper areas and that kind of forces the opposition to try to stop your creative players that are operating in deeper areas and that's going to somehow force them to come out from their shape and try to press that player or stop that player from scoring so in tactic creation the first thing you have to do is to actually look at your squad try to rate them who is your best players i'm looking at wolverhampton wanderers now we do have john moutinho and mateos cunha Diego Costa as well um wow so those are the players that we have to work with I kid you not so trying to rank them from their ability so you can see who the very best players are so there's Pablo Sarabia, Ruben Neves, Mateus Nunes, you have Gonzalo Guedes as well and Jamutini of course Nelson Semedo all these players are kind of the the players that are going to be in your first team so Nelson Semedo is going to be my right back and looking at Nelson Semedo's ability he has the ability to cross the ball he also has the pace and acceleration and work rate to get up and down the field so asking ruben to, um, nelson semedo to play as a defensive wing back it's not going to help us anyway so he's going to be a lot um, slightly more attacking in our own style of play so Matthias nunez and Pablo sarabia are also players to keep an eye on ruben Neves is going to ideally be my defensive midfielder deep line playmaker on support duty he can play on defend but i'm going to ask somebody else to do the defensive job because i want him to be very creative and then try to create chances you know be a lot more creative and not worry too much about his defensive responsibilities so when you go about rating your team and looking at who your best players are you can take another statistical look at it go into the squad planner go into your squad report and then from the squad report column in the squad planner you can look at the team's comparison and then see where your players rank up with all the other players 
in the league in comparison to all the other players in the league so this is the general information about their wages and club appearances where you can then go over to positions by positions and then try to filter out looking at all the positions you can see the attributes that are important to all positions and then you just have the goalkeepers you can go on to um on select everybody and then just look at the goalkeeper you can see that the wolverhampton wanderers goalkeepers do have good teamwork in them they have good decision making as well and that's about it every other thing is slightly above average and doesn't really stand out too much you can also filter by defenders and then by strikers as well so in defense you can see that we have strengths and you can do this for all the other positional attributes as well so in midfield and defense remember to always uncheck so you don't want to check the defensive attributes of strikers unless there's something you're really looking for there and just selecting the defenders alone in defensive attributes you can see that we have good tackling good heading good marking good strength slightly above average but our pace is not so good so playing with a very high line might not be very helpful for our defense because we may not be able to track back and close down the space as quickly as we ought to do Nelson Semedo may help but that's just the one person so kind of like that yes rate your team and in attack we can actually see our players attributes in attack and you can also filter it by strikers and also by midfielders and you can see that when you uncheck some options the bar kind of changes so you need to keep that in mind passing and acceleration or pace and acceleration is something our strikers do not have so playing on a counter attack and playing with the low block is not also going to help us very much because our players cannot cover that space and try to run at the opposition's defense very quickly so i'm looking at a possession based style of play that allows the team to move as a unit and also come back as a unit so what you do in this squad planner comparison tab is to generally um, get an understanding of what your players can do and what they can't do. That will also help you build your tactics. And I was making a joke about what the, what are we looking for in strikers' defensive attributes. That's very important actually. So I shouldn't have said that. So go into the defense and then you uncheck all the other defenders and then leave only the strikers in the defensive attributes. You can see that our strikers do have good jumping. Do have good strength and good heading so that's also something that is very beneficial to us you can actually go on to play long balls floated crosses that could help us in our advantage so go on to rate your players like this see what your players are good at see what they're not good at and to somehow help you you know design your tactics so once you're done rating your players and then looking at your team you can go on to create your tactics and then if you're a, if you're a new to football manager i think the preset tactics do work they work just fine and in depending on the match scenario since what i noticed in fm 2023 since the match scenario is constantly changing i don't always trust the preset settings but they do work and i'm starting to enjoy using the preset settings but for this video i'm going to show you how to create a brand new tactic your own tactic and then for Wolverhampton Wanderers, the 433 DM looks good. We're going to see if that actually works out eventually, but it looks good what I'm trying to create for Wolverhampton Wanderers. And then remember that we do have Semedo at right back. So that's going to be our first player on the list. He's injured right now, but that's us throw him in there because he's going to be our, one of our main key starters in this tactic. And then remember the second player is Ruben Neves. He's going to be in the DM position. And then remember Diego Costa as well as the striker. So the next thing when you go on to fill in your key players in is to actually look at the roles that they can play and based on the attributes that they have. So you don't really have to look at this other region here where the assistant manager is recommending roles for you. They are good for starters, but you can see that the aggression of Diego Costa is like, you know, almost 20. So that's crazy not to use him as a pressing forward. He's going to cause a lot of problems and considering that he's six foot one, pressing forward that can you know play on attack duty and then have them cross the ball to him floated crosses might also help us he doesn't have much of pace like that so we may not encourage him to press all the time even though he's going to always play as a pressing forward but the stamina he does have the stamina to press in close regions so that's going to be something to look for a start and you can go on to set the because as a pressing forward on attack and then Ruben Neves like I said he's going to be a defensive midfielder that is not very defensive so deep line playmaker is what comes to mind a lot of people say this role is not as defensive as it ought to be but from my experience it's a very creative role that works for counter-attacking sides so Ruben Neves is going to be the deep line playmaker on support and then I remember Matthias Nunez is the other player that I want to be in the central midfield which is also going to be another prime contributor I do like the box to box midfield role in this game but he's a ball winner his tackling is well 11 i don't really like tackling 11 in the premier league marking is not so great so i'm not going to really bother asking him to play as a ball winner i prefer the box to box midfielder role for this guy so going into all your players and then checking the attributes that they have and then if they can play the selected role that you want them to play for matthias nunez the ball winning midfielder is 
required to mark and tackle and I don't trust Mateus Nunes tackling abilities so I'm not going to ask him to play as a ball winning midfielder that is why I selected the box to box midfielder as opposed to the Cali, um, the Carrilero I'm not going to have a number 10 in here so if I did have a number 10 I could play the Cali, the Carrilero so but I don't have that so I'm going to want Mateus Nunes to get up ahead into the box as well and try to fashion out chances occupy the opposition and then allow Ruben Neves to be free in the deep line playmaker role in the defensive midfield. So after going through the team, this is what I settled on finally. I do have Pedro Neto here as an inside forward on support duty. He does have dribbling and finishing ability. So that's why I'm asking him to also be a player that gets into the box and try to score goals. Acceleration and pace are quite good as well. And I realized that after going through the squad planner and comparison that my attackers is only considering Diego Costa so that's why the team was actually slow when we look at the inside forwards and yeah I don't think the inside forwards are considered under strikers they are considered under midfielders so they're quite fast so Rabia has acceleration of 15 pace 14 as well technically he's better than Neto he has good first touch good finishing good dribbling good corners as well so he's a player that's going to cause a lot of havoc to the opposition on this wing and then he's going to get inside allowing Nelson Semedo to get ahead and try to cross the ball from this right hand side and then in the left hand side we have Ait Nuri playing as a wing back on attack GT he's also good at crossing and strength and stamina is something that could use some improvement but he's a wonder kid as well so I do want him to develop and that's why I'm playing him as a wing back on attack GT he's also going to take advantage of the space left behind by Neto and then the triangle in midfield is where the tactic really gets interesting so I brought in Lamina instead of Jao Moutinho the reason why I have Lamina in here is because I have Mateus Cuny is getting ahead and then Ruben Neves playing as a deep line playmaker and I want Jao Moutinho to be the backup for Ruben Neves in deep line playmaker role so I'm going to want ideally a player that can actually stop play and try to break the opposition's passing lanes get press the ball i want a player that is going to press the opposition aggressively that's why i brought in lamina with the box with the ball with a midfielder role selected for him so you kind of have to think about tactic creation like this what do you want your team to do how do you want the opposition to actually play into your hands and i do want my team to not press the opposition too much as much as i have diego costa as a pressing forward on attack I'm going to stick to the make plot system in this case and I know that I don't have the fastest pair of center backs but I do have a good pair of PC wing back and full back that is Aidnuri and Nelson Semedo. Aidnuri is actually okay not the fastest as well so I think I'm going to stick to the standard defensive line in this case but the pressing is going to be slightly more often because I want them the moment they get into this region here Diego Costa can actually start hustling the opposition and try to hit them on the break and since I realized that I do have Neto and Sarabia on either flank counter-attacking instruction is going to be working in our favor in this case with regards to mentality I do recommend that you stick to the balance mentality for most of the games that you're not sure if you're going to win if you're playing against a team that is a lot weaker than you you can settle for the attacking mentality but if the team is a stronger team if you're playing against a stronger team you can stick to cautious and then try to observe the game don't drop too much to very defensive unless it's like the last minute of the game and you want to see out the game completely you can drop to very defensive i only recommend defensive mentality for matches where you're absolutely sure that the opposition is going to be frustrated by you actually sitting deep if you're going against a team like manchester city and you play defensive they will break your team down and they will score there's nothing you're going to do about it i'm sorry so try to stick to balance or maybe cautious in that range so you can try to hit them on the break at some point and stop them from you know playing the way they the way they want to play you have to find a way to disrupt the opposition's style of playing i went for a pair of center backs in central defender central defender nothing too fancy nobody's playing as a ball when him as a ball playing defender here ideally max Kilman can play as a ball playing defender for this tactic but i'm going to stick to ball playing to central defenders in this case and then Jose Sa is a goalkeeper that ideally I wanted to be a super keeper on defend DT I spoke a little bit about how to select your goalkeeper in a different video but for this Jose Sa case you can look at Jose Sa now he has eccentricity of 13 which recommends that you can actually play him as a super keeper on attack looking at all the other attributes that he has you can play him as a super keeper on attack on support on defend it depends on how you want to play and if you're looking to play a counter-attacking style of play super keeper on attack and support are the recommended roles if you just want to have a cautious mentality possession based style of play then you can go for a super keeper on defend that way your goalkeeper is not going to try anything too fancy and it's going to try to 
play possession football first before doing anything too rash. Now to actually get the tactic to work the way it should, you have to train your players to play the certain roles that you've selected for them to play. You can go into the training schedule and then go into individual training and then one by one just select each player to play the role that you want them to play. I would like my super keeper to play as a super keeper on support duty because I'm not playing possession based football at this point. So super keeper on support is going to be fine. Just go into all the other players like Max Kielman for example. I think he has the ability to play as a ball playing defender. So I'm going to go on to change that role from two central defenders to one of those players is going to be the ball playing defender in Max Kielman. And remember that you're going to actually want to switch those players. If I'm not playing Kielman in the game, I'm going to have to change that role from ball playing defender to a different role, which is a central defender to match the player that is actually going to be playing that role on the day. Ruben Neves, for example, here we have Ruben Neves. He can play as a, oops, Ruben Neves can go on to play. He's going to practice playing as a deep line playmaker in the defensive midfield role on support duty. And then you can do this to all the other players. Diego Costa is a pressing forward on attack. He's going to play as a pressing forward on attack, so I'm going to include that as well. Sometimes you can ask your assistant to do it, but I would prefer going one by one and then selecting the player roles that I want my players to play on match day so they can start training for those roles. Another important aspect of getting your tactic to work is to actually practice them in friendlies. So your friendly games, the first one, two, three games, try to watch how the tactic plays out and then see what you don't like about it. And I, I recommend using all the small teams like Vetsville, Bonstetten, Grasshoppers, Toki, um, Football Club Social like this. Try to play against all these teams where you expect to actually win the game and then see how your tactic performs on a day where you're actually expected to win the game and then try to use that to build a player's fitness as well. But observe how the tactic is working and then see if you need to make any tweaks, see what you don't like about the tactic and then you can go back to the drawing board and then go on to tweak that tactic. And if you do want to see a video where I show you how to make tactics or make changes to an existing tactic, you can leave a like on this video. If we go on to have 100 likes for this video, I'll go on to make that video. So if you want to see overpowered team instructions, formations and player roles for Bowman in 2023, watch this next video. I'll see you there.